Hey guys, what's up? This is David Patrick Carey with Church of the Eternal Logos, and today I want to give you guys my review of Mesmerica. So some of you guys may not be familiar, some of you guys may already have been or have already seen it, but Mesmerica is a video, audio, experience, presentation, musical event, concert, if you will, um, with the central focus on an artist named James Hood. Now, I wanted to give my review on this because I have some critiques that I want to articulate that um, if you look online and look at some of the reviews, they're going to be very positive, and none of them really hit on the critiques that I want to express on, uh, lament on today. So I wanted to kind of create my own review video. So that's that's what this is. So who's James Hood? Um, James Hood is... Well, on his website, he's a self-proclaimed vital and versatile musical pioneer. He was a drummer for the band the, Pi- the Pretenders, the Pretenders, and he plays the handpan. In fact, here is the little handout that they give you if you go to the concert. So this is, you know, the handpan. It's kind of like this musical drum thing, and people touch it, and it has these really beautiful, uh, it has a beautiful tone to it, and then it gives you all the credits from all the different people involved in the video. And I'm going to try to find a video, so hopefully there's one playing right here, or if not, there's some visual representations of what exactly you would see. So, Mesmerica, it focuses on James Hood's music uh, mixed with kind of an ambient electronic sound behind it with incredible visuals and works you could argue there's a bit of a binaural beat aspect to it because there are a couple neuroscientists that are involved in this project and where i saw it uh to see these they're actually at planetariums so that, which is an incredible experience i went and saw it at the Shab- the shabbat uh space and science center over in oakland which is it was really beautiful it's up in the oakland hills and we're you're in a planetarium, so it's like this huge dome, right? And you're laying, and you're essentially laying back into a seat. So you're laying, you're like laying back, laying down, and it's like a 360 panorama perspective because all around your field of vision is the visual representation. So you're seeing fractals, you're seeing kaleidoscopes, you're seeing um, cosmic landscapes, uh, earthly landscapes. You're seeing. Uh, Martian landscapes. You're kind of moving through space, through through the stars, through galaxies, through um, you know uh, like ga- galactic dust fields, if you will, that are really you know beautiful with the different colors and stuff like that. Um, so you're you're presented with these incredible, incredible visuals, and, and in fact, the way that they're presented, it feels like you're always kind of moving through them, which is a really interesting experience. Um, it always feels like the camera, the 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 point of view is always moving. Oh, sorry, is always moving forward. It's moving through all these fractal worlds, this this infinite cosmic landscape, and um, so beautiful. I I give it an A, and you know an A. Yeah, an A, I was going to say A+, plus, but I'll say an A for the visual representation. And I do recommend that anybody, um, if Mesmerica, you know, look up, see if it's coming, if it's scheduled to come anywhere in a city near you, I do recommend you go and check it out. And hopefully my critique here at least will give you something to try to notice. And maybe you might disagree with what I have to say, but maybe you'll notice it as well. So it is incredible visuals. And if you guys are familiar with my other YouTube channel, you know that I love fractals and that a lot of the content that I actually share is psychedelic. Um, So there's a lot of overlap with what I perceived Mesmerica would be. It was very new agey. The crowd that was there, which you would expect, you know, I mean, I'm in Berkeley, so it's very new agey. And the presentation was very new agey. And It's actually one of the things that I've been soured on since I've been here is I'm not a big fan of the New Age. But one of the... uh, Well, one of the visual artists that was working on it, if you're familiar with my other channel, in fact, there's a guy named Beeple, B-E-P-L-E. He 
creates incredible visuals and he creates incredible art. And uh, I use some of his work for my other YouTube channel. And in fact, he worked on this presentation, which was really interesting. But the the, the music, so the, the visuals, A, I, I really love the visuals. I love fractals. I love vibrant psychedelic like colors. Um, the music, it was good. I would give it an A minus to a B. Um, the, the, the music was good. It was a lot of the hand pan, you know, as you would expect. That's, that's James Hood. Um, so I'd probably give the, the music an A minus. It goes along, it went along well with the visuals. I, I would have liked a little bit more bass, a little bit more uh, umph behind the music because it, it seemed a bit ethereal, right? You're moving through all these visuals and it's kind of like light ambient music and it'd been nice to have something that kind of rooted you some more bass uh but that's that's my own personal taste um but the point where i have a critique is some of the spiritual messages that james hood tries to kind of implant in your psyche i mean he actually talked about in videos regarding his intention for this was to play with people's awareness and again you have uh, neuroscientists that were part of this project, but he'll come in while the the videos, you know, the presentations going on, and, and and tell you to breathe and relax and to allow for your consciousness to expand and um, be open to you know be be open to creativity and and these types of things, which is all good. But what he's talked about a lot, which was a red flag for me because again I'm not big a big fan on the new age stuff is happiness and bliss. So he's trying to give you these really powerful at least in his perspective these powerful spiritual messages and it's always reiterating happiness happiness the natural state of humans are happiness and you know you have to become happy and 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 when you're in touch with your true self you're going to be filled with you know happiness and bliss and all this stuff. And I actually hate that. That this is my big critique for the Mesmerica because the music and the visuals it's hard to critique they're really great. But my spiritual journey that brought me back, you know, visionary psychoactive substances, those experiences actually brought me to Christianity in a very conservative orthodox theological interpretation. And once I got into that, I didn't, I didn't realize how philosophical and rational and all this stuff, uh, the deep rootedness of Christian theology, and you know, until for the last year or so, and it's been just been growing on me, and I just fall in love with it more and more and more. But there was no kind of like the lack of a beat, like a a, a bass to the music. There was no. For me, the happiness is like icing on a cake. There's no real substance there. And, you know, the idea of carrying your own cross, of bearing your own burden, of, of struggle, of, you know, perseverance, of truth and honesty and cutting through falsehood, like life isn't always happy, you know, whether it be the Christian or the Buddhist perspective of suffering, like that should be part of your spiritual message. And, and to give people this kind of, like, it's all positive, it's like a sugar pill. It's like a placebo effect. It's like eating cake without any, like, a real meal. It tastes good if for a little bit, but you can't live off that. And this is one of my big frustrations with the New Age theology and, and movement in general. But, you know, this was even reiterated in the debate between Jordan Peterson and, and Slava Zizek. So I don't know if you guys saw that, but their whole debate was on, like, happiness or something like that and discussing communism and Marxism and economics. But that was one of the things that they found agreement on was happiness should be a byproduct of human endeavors, whether that be pursuit of meaning, whether that be your family and whether that be protection or community or all these different aspects, happiness should be a byproduct. It shouldn't be the main goal. And in the Mesmerica, the, the messages that James Hood would bring and, you know, subtly in, into essentially your, your consciousness is about, it's like 
happiness, happiness, happiness. Like I'm tired of happiness. I want something real. And we see this even in culture with like the authenticity of people who break political correctness, right? Because political political correctness is a way to maintain, um, it's kind of a utilitarian aspect to maintain the greatest amount of happiness by not offending people. Well, you know, fuck that. I'm tired of people not being offended. I want to offend people, especially since I've been here in Berkeley. Like before I got here, oh, okay, yeah. I'll play the rules. Since I've been here, I'm so sick of it. Like, I don't give a damn if you're a soft little weakling and you get offended. And I know this is a little bit off message from Mesmerica, but um, I, I just can't stand that, that, that sentiment, that this, this pursuit of happiness, that somehow happiness and spirituality are the same thing. I mean, it's not. It's not. It's about development of yourself. It's about truth. It's about connecting with what is real. And that's why my takeaway was it, it's a sort of Luciferianism um, because the, the, the underlying message of the Mesmerica was essentially you are your own God. And, and once you get in touch with your true self, you're going to experience this you know eternal state of bliss and happiness and all this and it's kind of an, an illuminism, which is something that I dabble in because I am a Christian that is very conservative in my Christian theology, but I'm interested in psychedelics. I'm interested in substance. I'm interested in altering one's consciousness through various endeavors, activities, uh, modalities. But um, illuminism is the underlying it's it's a Luc- so luciferianism is a little bit different from satanism satanism is an atheistic or theistic understanding of worship of chaos or satan or something like that or hedonism luciferianism is a little bit different luciferianism is about illuminism it's about light it's about uh it's it's a different take on a subtle uh, you know uh jab of whoever the Luciferian being is, right? The morning star, the planet Venus, uh, Lucifer's the light bringer, Lucius, like, you know, uh, you guys are probably familiar with some of this stuff, but um, there was never a mention of a higher order in, in the Mesmerica, you know, like I, I, like it's something about God, about a higher, a higher state of consciousness about that isn't yours, right? Something that's beyond a higher form of intelligence, something like that. I mean, you can frame it in secular new agey type terms, but it was never that it's always about yourself. And, and my takeaway, and you, if you guys go to it, you may feel a little bit differently, but it feels it's kind of like this new agey, the undergirding theologies, because that's what I was looking at is like, what is this, what are these messages aligning to in terms of like a theological understanding? And to me, it's it's sort of an, a, a, a Luciferianism where it's about you becoming illumined. You know, this is what the whole conspiracy theory is about, the Illuminati and stuff like that. Not that there aren't uh, secret societies and cabals around the world that are trying to, to take power. Of course there are. But Illuminism, Illuminati, it comes from this idea that you are the enlightened one and essentially everybody else is a state of darkness, which then allows you, you know, if you... Uh, well, um, that was kind of my takeaway. So I give Mesmerica overall a B, a B minus. That's kind of where I am with it. Um I would have, I would have loved, and, and this is what I'm going to create an, another video. And so there's the video that I'm making right now. And then tomorrow I'm going to record a different video of me trying to express, I've come up with, uh, dealing, dabbling into some new theological readings and stuff. I've kind of constructed a bit of a, of a Christian take on the cosmos, on fractal mathematics, on chaos theory, on all these things. And I'm going to present that in another video. But I would love to do what James Hood is doing in terms of ambient, uh, binaural, uh, spiritual. He describes it as a new age type music. I do, I wouldn't want to do the new age. I'm just saying what he did. But incredible fractal, cosmic imagery, earthly landscapes, you know, uh, kind of universal, I mean, you, the universe type frontiers you're encountering through, through star systems and stuff like that. 
Um, I would love to do that, but with a theism, a, a theistic take on it. So this is kind of my review. I'm kind of beating a dead horse at this point, but the, the focus on happiness that was totally, I mean, it was constantly being suggested inside the mesmeric video experience, audio experience, that I just find it so empty. And I, 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 turned to, I, I tend to just turn myself off. Not that I did, but, but when people talk like that generally, I can't stand it because happiness should never be the goal you're seeking. And it just, it, to me, it just ties in with political correctness, with soft people. I mean, uh, that's another thing is like strong people, not soft people, but strong, um, determined people, they're not pursuing happiness. You know, usually it, it's something beyond that. And that's kind of just what I wanted to say about this. So anyways, let me know what you think. Let me know if you've actually gone to Mesmerica. Um, I know... One of my friends, in fact, the the buddy who turned me on to it was it was Dr. Michael Muller, who I did a podcast with on this channel before. So he's the one that kind of turned me on to it because this whole the uh, presentations I guess started in San Diego where he lives, and it's kind of moved up here to the Bay Area. But check out and see if this is going to be coming to a city near you. It is worth going. It is pretty cool. Um, and maybe you guys disagree with me on the whole happiness thing, but I hate when people talk about happiness in regards to spirituality and like goals that they're orienting their life towards. So that's all I have to say about that. Please like, share, and subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comments section, and uh, I will talk to you guys in the next video. God bless.